hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. I am the Gerbil and this is a 3v3 defense guide for Grand Arena. Why 3v3? Because, well, I'm better at it than I am 5v5, so I've got a bit more to share about it. But the focus of this video is I'm going to try to make it not so like Kyber 2 level uh, and I'm going to try to make it uh, more kind of uh, accessible for people that are I would say at least level 85, but maybe in the 2 million GP range and up. I am not going to talk about GLs very much. Um, this is a non-GL focused video, uh, but what I am going to talk about is the stuff you can see right over here. So again, why 3v3 GAC? Well, because it is notable that I have a solid roster, but I am punching way above my weight for that roster. I mean, 7.7 .7 million GP is nothing to, to, to like laugh at or anything, but I, I only have two GLs at that point. And I'm going to show you my opponents always have more. And in the last six weeks of 3v3, and yeah, there was a 5v5 in between. I'm only talking about 3v3. Uh, I have 14 wins currently and four losses. Okay. That's basically, that's, that's a one to four ratio almost. I mean, it's three and a half to, to, to one, right? So let's look at the last one real fast. The last week, these were my opponents in GAC. And you can see round one, my opponent had six GLs. In round two, they had four. In round three, they had four. And I had two. And no, I do not have Starkiller. So how am I... How am I getting there? How am I winning? Some of it is luck. Yes, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but a lot of it comes down to outperforming and there's a lot of strategy there that I hope to share. So tip number one, to manage defense, you need to know what works on defense and everybody's roster is different. No, nobody has the same rosters. We've all gotten different paths. Maybe you went for Ray, so you've got a bunch of resistance or maybe you're going for Starkiller and you don't have any GLs yet or whatever, right? So how do you find out what works? And with 229 characters now that Ben Solo has been added, it can be uh, daunting to figure out the best combination. So you should bookmark this swgoh.gg slash GAC and they've got these three links right here. The first one says GAC meta squads and that brings you to a screen like this where you can sort uh, in a number of different ways and you can look at different seasons of, of GAC and if you click that defense tab you can see the teams that have been holding the most. So you can see the hold percentage rate. This means that this this top squad here with Lord Vader, Maul and Royal Guard it is holding 43 and a half percent of the time I mean that's nearly half that is fantastic next to that we can see the banners that that the opponents are achieving when they win so for a defensive perspective the lower that number is the better it is now I'm gonna scroll down here a little bit so now we can see these are like the top 15 teams in order and you can see in the top we've got a GL, Qui-Gon, GL, 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 GL. So um, we're just going to say GLs hold better, period. Moving beyond that, Qui-Gon Jinn is at the top of it and then right below that is Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, Omicrons make a big difference and this, I mean if, if there's any doubt, look at this and see what you can build out of this roster. I mean, just like screenshot it and go through your library and see what you can make out of it. Because these are some of the most effective teams measured by tens of thousands of players. Analysis, statistical analysis is far better than anything you're gonna get from my video or most other people's. Something else that's really awesome on SWGOH is this squad counter over here. So it's like, this is like saying, you know, when you're going on offense, what is going to beat it? Or when you look at your, you do some scouting, look at your opponent's roster. What do they have that can beat what you're placing on defense? And when you go there, you can sort it out by 5v5 or 3v3. And, and it's really, really great. You can see everything that's that's been logged uh, by enough people to make it notable. Um, be aware though that your mods, their mods, speed, gear, etc. affects this, right? Turn order, so mileage may vary. But anyway, enough about SWGOH, let's get into the actual arena. All right, so this was my last grand arena, 3v3 against SL Cactus. And you can just see from the get-go, I'm at a disadvantage. 
right? On my side, we've got, what was that, Bam, Newt, uh, CLS, and um, Mando. On their side, we've got two GLs, Lord Vader, the number one hold, Jedi Master Luke, Bosk, and Padme. And I'm going to win this. So how? How do we get there? Well, let's get rid of that and let's dive into this. There are really three strategies for defensive holds uh, or just defensive strategies that, that I think about when placing. I think about trying to hold the line, which means not losing, right? Timing out or defeating the attacking team. There's a, the, ex, the second one is the expectation of a loss, but trying to steal or snipe as many banners from your opponent as possible. And the last one is, is also kind of expecting a loss, but placing defense strategically to limit your opponent's uh, abilities to engage. Um, so let's look at these. So hold versus in timing out, okay? This is one of the most durable defensive teams out there. If you don't know how to deal with it, it can be an absolute nightmare, right? So this team doesn't really pack a lot of punch. It's actually not gonna beat a lot of things, but it's very easy to time out the match because both Wat Tambor and Basla Shan are going to apply some really interesting effects on Jedi Master Luke such that he, he can recover an, an insane amount of protection and bonus protection every turn. Um, I've been in situations where I have like Sith Eternal hitting him for 140,000 damage a turn and he's still every turn seemingly at full protection. Um, so it can be really, really, really challenging. So this is a team that you might place to just hold the line or time out your opponent. All right, the next strategy, banner stealing. Uh, this is not, not by any means a good team, I think, but it will snipe banners if it can get a turn or two off. It's very easy to, these are all slower characters, so it's easy to kill them before they take a turn, but Wedge has an AoE, Lando has an AoE, and then K2 counterattacks. So those are two different things you can look at, AoEs and counterattacks. I'm not suggesting this particular team, by the way, it's just an example. So in this situation, both Wedge and Lando are going to strip the entire enemy team of some protection, minus three banners. Uh, K2, just as a tank, he's going to taunt in debt all the time, and he has like a 97% chance to with to uh, counterattack. So everybody who punches him, he's going to punch back again, stealing some protection. So it's a it's a protection stealing team. Even if they clear it, they're not going to get full banners, right? So that's good. The other one, limiting options. In this situation, what I mean is to find teams that sort of require specific counters. This is also kind of an example of a timeout team. Um, Mon Mothma heals the team, the Hoth Scout and Pal, they both pump turn meter so much so that they can just go turn after turn after turn after turn after turn. Uh, and if you really don't know what you're doing, it's not un- uh, reasonable for them to grind you down or time out the game. So there are specific counters for them. For example, Jawas and Treya. They both work against teams that call a million assists. So I'm going to talk more about this in a second, how you can deploy it on a larger scale. Okay, so here we go. Pop quiz. How should you arrange these teams? Um, and let's assume these are just the leaders of the team. Let's assume this is what you have at your disposal, right? This is the defense that you've elected for. How should they go? Well, first thing you got to know about GAC is that the bottom row is worth more points than the top row. So if, if you clear their first row and their ships only, but your opponent clears both your bottom squads, they win. Uh, assuming all other things are equal and no drop battles. So you need to prioritize defense on the bottom row. That means that if you, these are your six leaders, Qui-Gon, Padme, Jin, Chirpa, Luke, and Rolo, then you probably need to arrange them like so. Putting uh, Rolo, Jin, and Chirpa up top and your much stronger, more powerful defensive teams down below, Padme, Luke, and Qui-Gon in this simple example. All right, here's another one. Front row or back row now. Okay, so you prioritize defense down below. Now, 
We got six more characters. Where do you put them? And this one, we have a lot of options. So the first one I call the Iron Curtain. In this situation, what you're doing is you're putting your absolute strongest defense in the front, and then you're just filling the back row with whatever you have left over. Um, and specifically weaker things. The objective here is to hope your opponent simply cannot breach you. If they cannot get through that wall, then you can put gear one, level one stuff in the back and it doesn't matter. This saves you a lot more of your offensive teams to go at them uh, and try to outdo them in banners. I do not like this approach. I have won so many GACs because my opponents did this, expecting me not to get through, and I do. So this one is a guarantee loss if your curtain breaks. All right, option number two, false security. In this situation, you stack your front row with good to, to decent, or like I would say maybe A minus B plus squads, and then put your best defense in the back. The hope here is that your opponent uses some of their, their best squads like Darth Revan, CLS, whatever. Again, I'm not talking much about GLs, but they use their, their better offensive teams. Then when they reveal that back wall, they're kind of screwed. That they, they don't have anything or they haven't they don't have anything at the same level, and now they're gonna possibly have to two or triple shot something to clear it, right? This is one I really, really like. Uh, option number three is back what I was saying, like limiting options, staggering similar teams. So in this example, we got Karth and Mon Mothma in the front. Both of them are very, very frequently countered by Treya, right? So if you go to swgh.gg again and you look at these two leaders, Treya is almost always at the top of the list. Treya, 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 Treya. So that means if they use Treya to take down one of these, when you get to that back row and you're looking at Jawas, you're like, or not Jawas, but uh, Geonosians, you're like, ah, crap. Because again, most people don't have Jawas. Their Treya is gone. In this case, it makes the back row a little bit more challenging. Of course, there's a lot of other squads, Empire and people who easily handle that, but you're limiting their options by stacking multiple counter options front and back. I, I like this a lot in Territory Wars, not so much in Grand Arena. Option number four is my favorite, the Fortress. It's also how what Zareth Prevail does a lot. He puts really hard defense in and he wins a lot. So in this example, I've got a GL and Qui-Gon and Darth Revan there. And in the back row, I got a GL, Anakin and Newt. And you're thinking, you may be thinking, Newt, what, huh? Yeah, don't, don't leave. This is a solid one. But the idea here is simply that they can't full clear you, period. Um, it also, of course, limits, greatly limits your offensive power by stripping out your best teams, okay? Option number five is the screw it, I'll win on offense concept. Just placing all your meh, whatever you have on defense, hoping that, that your offense can just run over them as easy as you are going to let them run over you. This is almost a guaranteed loss because in this situation, your opponent will simply just send solos at everything, right? They're gonna take Kylo on mask and solo one. They're gonna take Wampa solo one, um, Chewbacca and solo one even. I mean, it's it's nuts. So uh, Malak, Jedi Knight Luke, GLs, you're basically gonna give them bonus banners every position, don't do it. All right, so let's look at my actual defenses. What have I done? Um, well, this is my most recent. So I've got, uh, on the top, I put General Grievous, Newt, Dooku, Hux, and Admiral Radis. And then on the lower one below that, I got Geo's crew, um, the Mandalorian Beskar, CLS, Jedi Knight Luke, and then behind that, I've got Qui-Gon, Mon Mothma, Padme, Bosk, and Iden. And here's how I rank these teams. And you'll see that in that lower section, which is where I'm putting my emphasis, I've got three A-plus teams, how I rank them. And I got a B, which is kind of false security, and the A-minus, also a bit of false security, because Crew is kind of like just a default, right? I mean, everyone sees him nowadays. So it's like, we know he's gonna be there, it's a default. So the thinking is, I'm trying to lure them into false security, put three super strong defensive teams, and that kind of just makes it look like, well, that's all I've got, right? Um, 
but that's not true. I, in the back row, I got two Omicron heavy hitter teams. Padme, which is just a problem. Mon Mothma is a problem with the Geos in front of it. Uh, and then Bosk is just one of those holdout teams. Of course, Mando is there to disintegrate, so who knows. Which ones have had the most holds? Uh, right here. Newt is my number one holding team. Number one. Gets more holds than anybody else. Um, Radis has done really good so far, which I'll talk about exclusively in a second. And then there's the others. Um, rarely do I ever get full cleared. Rarely, rarely, rarely. So Radis, just so you can see, Radis uh, last phase round beat <laughs> beat a Relic 5 Bad Batch. And then it beat a Relic 7 Han Solo Chewbacca with Lando lead. Why? It's because Radis is such a new character right now that people don't know his kit. And whenever an enemy gains bonus turn meter, um, it, it dazes them, which stops them from assisting, which just shuts down Chewbacca. Um, they have a high... Anyway, it's a fantastic surprise tricky team. Um, so... I'm going to enjoy that one now that my Radis is Relic 7. Uh, oops, wrong way. Next, uh, here's here's my Mandalorian Beskar. And check out what it's beating. CLS with Rebaka. It's beating Darth Revan. No Malak, that's notable. General Grievous. Padme. This team is insanely good. Because the Beskar Mando, he gives bonus turn meter whenever an enemy takes damage. And Honda, uh, Solo is going to attack twice. Chewie's going to help. So that's bonus turn meter a lot right there. Um, but more so than that, Chewie puts guard up. Beskar puts damage immunity. These guys become very, very, very durable, even though there's no tanks there. Uh, there's some other craziness in the kit, but it's a fantastic team. Super, super worth checking out. Now look at my Newt. Newt is beating a lot of people here. Now these are not the most amazing ones at the bottom. I would note that that's, an imp that's a Relic 7 Emperor Palpatine with, uh, it's a low gear Mara, but it's still a Mara, right? Mara Jade. We got some Bad Batch happening again. We got clones in the top. We got Sith Marauder with Bash of the Shan. I don't know why it's under Sidious, but whatever. And that's, that's a gear 11 Newt. Um, and I'll talk about how that works in a second. Now, here's my favorite one, though, is uh, Ewoks. Again, these guys hold all the time for me. I, In 5v5, I will never advocate putting them on defense. No. But in 3v3, uh, they, they, they punch way above their weight, especially if they're properly modded. And I have an amazing Ewok guide for that. If you want to know more about it, check it out. Just search Ewok Guide the Gerbil. Um, and, I, and I'll show you how to properly mod them. I guarantee you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I guarantee you're modding them wrong. Uh, now, let's talk about some of these squads specifically. Qui-Gon Jinn, Jedi Knight Anakin is the requirement. You put Cam in there and it becomes the second most holding team in Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. Take out all of the GLs and then instead of Cam, you put Mace. It's the third most holding team. Oh no, actually, if you take out the GLs, it's the first and then Mace becomes the second. I don't have either of them geared up, so I put in General Kenobi. Why? Because he auto taunts, which keeps Jedi Knight Anakin alive long enough to do what he does with all of that epic damage from uh, Qui-Gon's Omicron. It is just a headache to deal with. It puts fear in people, especially if it's on the back row and they've used up some of their better teams in the front. Um, next, I want to talk about Mandalorian, like I said, Chewbacca, Han Solo. Uh, Solo's going to shoot first, Chewbacca's going to assist, Chewbacca's going to put the guard on it, Chewbacca helps heal, Mando puts everybody, or, or can heal, and he can uh, puts that damage immunity out there. So it, it has tankiness, it has healing, it has turn meter advantage, um, it's really, really solid. One reason I love 3v3 is because there's a lot of diversity. Instead of Mandalorian, you can run CLS lead, which is very typical, or you can put Dash Rindar in there because he gives them additional crit damage and all kinds of other goodies. And he's fast and he just spreads debuffs out like candy. Um, Commander Luke with C-3PO and Chupio is an amazing defensive team and offense, actually. C-3PO puts out the expose on people, 
Chewbacca pumps up everybody's damage, he assists. Even when 2P or 3PO does a basic, he assists, right? Luke has a heal. Luke's gonna get stacks of translation. He'll get the three stacks almost immediately because the AI, I think, tends to uh, have C3PO put one on Luke. Luke does his second special. There's a second one, then he does his, his other special. He's got three stacks. And then that cooldown starts to be reduced every time C3PO takes a turn, which means he heals again and heals again and heals again and heals again and Chupio is just beefy and of course he's got the AOE uh, attack and blind he's insane uh, Mon Mothma Kyle, Kyle and Kara Kara is the the AOE turn meter removal Kyle is a is a freight train when he hits and Mon Mothma has a summon and heals the squad Akbar if you haven't been paying attention Akbar Leia uh, and Stormtrooper Han have one of the most epic turn meter trains that once it gets going, they can take 5, 10, 15 turns between Trooper Han removing enemy turn meter and gaining it himself, Akbar gaining turn meter, and Leia just assisting everywhere. Now, if you put a good armor penetration datacron on them, it can be a level 2 or a level 5 or whatever. Doesn't need the specials, just high uh, armor penetration. I've been having Leia hitting for 40,000 damage per shot times three for an assist, I mean like 120,000 damage, it's crazy. A really, really fun um, 3v3, whether it's offense or defense, but I, I reckon better on defense, would be Akbar lead with Leia's Omicron and then Mon Mothma. Because Mothma, all of her turns are non-attacks, guaranteeing to call Akbar and Leia. She's gonna, of course, uh, Mon Mothma's gonna summon her person for assist. She can, um, she heals the team slowly. Princess Leia heals the team. Akbar has the cleanse. It can be a real nightmare if you don't know what you're doing against that one. Uh, moving on, we got <laughs> Admiral Raddus. Uh, two versions of him in 3v3. It's it's really interesting because Raddus. Uh, well, let's go over to Jin. Jin cannot be defeated while Raddus is there. K2 is going to auto taunt, auto retribute. Jin can revive Raddus. So there's like some wackiness going on, and the kill order can be really, really hard. Um, also, with that Omicron, he, th everybody's starting with like plus uh, 60 something speed, plus 36 or whatever potency. It works better in 5v5, but it's still uh, a headache. Also, it's a new kit, so a lot of people don't know what they're doing yet with it and they're throwing the wrong counters at it alternatively if you don't have Jin or k2 i think scare pathfinder may be a better one in 3v3 because he self revives and then chirut also has healing to keep the team going so i don't know grand inquisitor inquisitors they are better than people think they really really are more and more and more people are starting to recognize that they are not an a plus team no 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 but like radis they are still new enough that a lot of people don't know what to throw at them so they're overcompensating pulling in a stronger team that could have or should have been used somewhere else or they're underestimating and losing so it is a very scary variable right now also because their reputation is so bad people tend to underestimate and they're throwing weaker teams at it and going wow that didn't go so well and losing all right, the last two is uh, Jedi Knight Luke with Obi-Wan and Hermit Yoda. So this is a surprise team that turns out to be insanely good. Hermit Yoda, you you need to have him or Shakti, but preferably Hermit Yoda with a crap load of speed so that he goes first, triggers Heroes Arise on Luke, everybody attacks and assists, which means Yoda's gonna give some turn meter out there and heal. Um, but then Luke takes a bonus turn stuns everyone down, Obi-Wan applies uh, mass ability block on everyone, and then Hermit Yoda can apply foresight on everyone, and they just go to town. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy strong. And then the Ewoks. Again, check out my guide on Ewoks, but they get more holds than anyone consistently other than Newt for me. Uh, and part of that is, again, my opponents consistently, consistently underestimate them. Yes, the, 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 the more thoughtful ones look at that and go, huh, Wampa, and Wampa wins, especially with its Omicron. But I have had, like I said, General Grievous, Bad Batch, really, really good teams that they throw at it and they get decimated. Partly in this particular lineup, because with the Omicron, 
There's a guaranteed assist almost every turn. Poplar's basic removes all buffs, so he's gonna get past tanks. Wicked is gonna provide some turn meter train. Every time they use a basic, they gain more turn meter. Wicked is gonna pretty much by default call Poplo to assist with his, I think it's the Gorilla Strike, which is gonna help Poplo recover 10% uh, protection and health because he's gonna gain stealth, remove it, gain taunt, and of course remove any status effects from the opponents. So Poplo alone is gonna keep the enemy team cleansed. Sherpa is gonna give everybody retribution, which also helps Poplo cleanse off the, the enemy team. Wicked's gonna get retribution, so he's just gonna keep hitting and hitting and hitting, and they go nuts. Alternatively, you can take out Poplo and put in either Elder, who's gonna give you more turn meter train and revives, but I don't think it's as good of a team, or Lagre, who's gonna give you the mass days, and then um, also some uh, turn meter removal from the enemies, and Foresight. So, I, I don't know. I prefer Chirpa, Poplo, Wicked. Overall, here are uh, my top 20 defense teams that I kind of rotate through uh, at present. And um, I will probably mix it up, especially now that I've shown this video and just told the next pe person how to beat me. But these are the teams I like best. Again, everybody's roster is a little bit different. So I'm not saying that these are the best at all. No, these are the best for me. And use it uh, however you can. Um, some of these are stripped right out of SWGOH, but uh, again, your roster won't look like my roster. So if you want some more help, some more guidance on this, check out some of these videos from AP Gains, Zareth, Bit Dynasty, Arnold, uh, and there's a lot of other ones out there. Celiac Sarah, I think, has a really good one, but I couldn't find it. Um, there's a bunch of great ones out there. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you in some way. Um, I, I really love GAC. I like 3v3 GAC. There's a lot more diversity in it, which I know makes it hard for a lot of people. But I also think the matches are faster because there's only three characters. So I think it's, I think it's faster than 5v5. I spend less time in it, which is good because I'm fairly busy making videos like this and living my life out there somewhere. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. Please, please, please. And I'll catch you all later. Bye bye.